Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this regal wirework cabochon design. So we get a really beautiful and elegant effect and you can of course make it look however you want to depending on the materials that you're using. And these pieces will also be available for sale in my shop where I sell loads of other jewelry kits and tutorials. Link will be in the description box down below. Otherwise if you want to learn how you can make your own then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. The wire that I'm using is a regular round silver coated copper wire and the first gauge here is a 0.6mm and then the second gauge is a 0.3mm. Now you can always play around with the sizes of your wire depending on the other materials that you're using. Of course we also need the cabochon that we're going to capture so I'm using this 3 by 4 centimeter oval cabochon and this is a blue dyed agate gemstone. Then the beads that I'm using are these 2mm rounds and the specific ones are faceted silver coated hematite gemstone beads. Of course you can mix and match your materials however you want to. And then we'll need some findings so I'm going to hang my pendant on a chain and I've got a lobster claw clasp and extender chain and a couple of jump rings to put it together. We then need a few pliers as well so I've got my flush cutters who can of course cut our wire chain nose and tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire. Now we're going to need our gizmo coiling tool to help make our coils with and I'm going to be using the 5mm rod. Now you can always change up the size of that depending on how it fits with the other materials that you're using. I'm going to use a crochet hook to help shape the bale but you can use any form of mandrel that is the size you want your bale to be. And lastly we need a jewelry hammer along with a steel block. Now the material list will be in the description box below the video and I'm also going to leave some useful links otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. So we're going to start out making our coils. First of all I'm going to attach the coil and gizmo to my desk then put the end of the 0.6mm wire around the handle so it's secure and then we can just start turning the handle and creating our coil. Now you want to make sure that your coils are nice and tight but also that they're not overlapping each other. Now I'm personally going to coil the full length of the rod as I'd rather have too much than too little and you can always use the remaining coils for other designs but of course you can coil a shorter length if you want. So now I've finished coiling the whole rod then we can remove it from the tool and then also cut off the wire from the reel and then we just want to remove the coil from the rod here so just undo that little end and slide it off and to get both ends nice and neat I'm also just going to cut off any excess wire that's not really part of the coil and here we have a finished length of coil now what we then need to do is flatten this so I'm going to start out by using my hands by just starting from one end and basically pushing the coils a bit sideways like this instead of them laying right next to each other they're going to kind of be overlapping instead and then just do that all the way along until the other end here I'm going to then bring in my steel block here because we need to start hammering it flatter so of course also get the hammer ready and then I'm just going to grab my coil here from one end again and I'm just using the soft end of the hammer and you just want to gently start hammering this flatter you don't need to do it hard just like I said gently move along flattening it more and more and you can see they just start to separate out a little bit so we just want to move like this all the way along to the other end so you can see we've now got a flatter piece of coil here now don't worry it's starting to look a bit messy in that we're going to be fixing that but I like to just go over it again to just get it a little bit flatter so just start from the end again and just gently use the hammer to help separate out these loops that we're now creating instead and again just do that all the way along and then we can put the hammer and steel block away and I've ended up with something that looks a bit like this so as you can see it's looking rather messy now don't worry about that because we're now going to go back to an one end again and we need to start pulling these apart more so we're basically going to end up with little teardrop shapes sat next to each other rather than overlapping this much so I'm just going to grab the end first and then move in a little bit and keep hold of that part just gently and then start to pull them apart a bit and you can see they start to separate more and just try and keep it nice and even so if you see anywhere that's not quite separating as much just focus on that area but then also keep pushing them flat you can just use your fingers for that and basically keep pulling them apart until like I said they're sat more side by side rather than overlapping or have too much of a gap and you can see it starts to get nice and uniform again and also by pulling them apart like this we end up with more of a straight piece of these loops rather than the mess that it was before so you've done that section move along and do the next section and just keep going like this until we've done the whole length then once I have the whole length here and it's nice and even I'm just going to cut off the end that's a little bit messy and then from here what we need to do is start alternating these loops away from each other. So again start from one end and just grab the very first loop and then hold on to the second one. And then in this case the first one is laying just slightly on top of the second one. So I'm going to flip this 
away from it so they basically end up on opposite sides and then I'm going to grab onto the next loop which is then the first one on this side and grab onto the one after it and then flip it around again so you can see we're now basically spacing them out more and also getting them on opposite sides and I just want to continue like this for however long we need a length to be able to go around the cabochon and a bit extra and then once we have the length that we need here we can go in and cut off the excess and like I said you can then just use the remaining of it for some other designs. Now what we then need to do is start bringing this into the shape of the cabochon. So we need to make sure it stays flat and I'm going to then have one side of the loops start to get closer together. And obviously in this case I'm using an oval cabochon so I'm just going to get it into roughly that shape. And then I also like to bring in the cabochon itself just to make sure I get the size right. So I'm basically going to lay the cabochon on top of those inner loops. If we look on the back. They're going to basically be just on the inside, so where the loops are connecting is going to be just on the outside of the cabochon. So just keep going until the whole shape is in place. So something a bit like that. You can see we have the outer loops just sticking out and away from the stone. Now what I then just like to do is make sure we have the shape in place and then just kind of hold on to it with the cabochon on top of it because we now need to start pushing these outer loops in over the front of the stone but of course making sure that everything is in the right size and shape so hold on to the wire and the stone and then start to push these upwards and in over the front and obviously you want to make sure you just hold on to the bottom ones here that are behind the cabochon while we're pushing the other ones over the front otherwise they're going to move as well which we don't want them to we want them to stay flat on the back of the cabochon so you can just do a bit at a time and work your way around so now you can start to see the idea of capturing the cabochon all the way around with the loops on the back and then the loops on the front and you just want to make sure the loops at the top here meet up so we have just the right amount now after here what we need to do is just start undoing these last few loops that we did not need to use. So I'm just going to start on the end and just roll in the opposite direction. So we're basically straightening the wire out. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It's still going to be a little bit wonky looking because obviously we already shaped the wire into the loops. But just undo the loops basically. So we get a somewhat straight length of wire that we can use for the bail then. So now we've got the wire straighter here. You can see they also meet up at the top and they're going to work perfectly to then use for the bail. Now what I then just like to do is kind of connect the frame here at the top using those two wires just to help hold the shape in place. So I'm just going to keep the cabochon in there and then the two lengths of wire I'm just going to basically start to just twist them together so just carefully put a bit of a twist into it so this is what it looks like now that's the front and that's the back but as you can see it's still pretty loose and the cabochon can easily come out but this is where the 0.3mm wire comes in so I'm going to start on the back and I'm going to cut a length of a 0.3mm and I have a length of about a metre here of course that will depend on the piece that you're making now we then need to find where the midpoint is and I'm just going to keep hold of that but then get to one end and I'm going to grab my cabochon now you can always take out the stone whenever you need to or use it to help hold the shape of the frame but then what I'm going to do is find the middle loop on the bottom here or the middle two if you have in between and then I'm starting on the back I just want to attach this length of wire that we just cut to that middle loop and then it's going to be a little bit easier just popping the cabochon out for now and I just want to basically wrap this wire around the 0.6mm that's creating that loop so just gently wrap it around and just bring the end up through the loop Pull it all the way through, nice and gentle. Tighten it around the 0.6mm. And you can always use pliers at any point to help push your wraps together. And then bring it back over and down through the middle of the frame. And we just want to basically attach this by wrapping it a few times. And I'm staying in the middle of the loop. So I'm going to be now wrapping to get to the point where these two loops next to each other basically start to meet up. So I want to wrap down to that point and of course as I'm doing that I'm also going to make sure that I'm wrapping the other side and also getting to the point where these two loops are starting to meet up. 
So now you can see I've basically wrapped across the top of the loop and I've ended up with the ends of the wire on either side where they meet up with the loops next to them. So now what we're going to do is take one wire at a time and move from this first loop we started wrapping until the next one and basically start to connect them. Now as you do this, it's obviously easy to go through the loops without the cabochon being in place. So I'm just going to bring the wire up through. But what I do like to do is bring the cabochon back in, so make sure to have it handy. Just so I know it keeps its shape and we're also not pulling anything too tight or making it too loose. And then you can just go around the wire in that loop. And bring it through. And then pull this tight to start the wraps on this next loop here. And then we're basically connected two loops right next to each other. And then you can just do a few wraps here to make sure it's nice and fastened. And of course, you can always remove the cabochon to make it easier. But I like to do just a couple wraps first of all. So I know this side is in place. And then I just go to the other side and do the same thing. So again, I'm just grabbing that length of wire. And then you just want to bring it through the loop right next to it. And then when we're connecting them, you can just wrap with a figure of eight weave. And then, of course, just do a couple of wraps on this one. So that is also nice and secure. Bring the wire through. And again, make sure every single time you do a wrap that they are nice and tight together. So if you need to, you can always use a pair of pliers to help push them together. But then from here, we want to continue wrapping on one side at a time to the point where on the other side of this loop we're currently wrapping, it starts to meet up with the loop next to it again. And basically that's how you want to keep working your way up the sides towards the top. And like I said, I like to work my way from side to side, so I'm moving my way upwards equally. So I now made it all the way up to the top here, connecting all the loops. And we can just double check with the cabochon. It still fits in there and it's also now nice and snug. Now, obviously, we need to finish off the ends of these wires here. So they've ended up basically meeting up at the top and they're sitting right next to each other. So what I'm going to do is just take my flush cutters and we just want to cut off one at a time. I'm going to cut it off towards the inside of the loop. Cut that off. And then just grab my tweezer nose and just push that down. And then we have the other length that I then want to basically finish up in the same place so it's going to seem nice and seamless. So cut that off again towards the inside and then just make sure to push that down as well. So none of the ends are sticking out and away from the piece. Then we need to move on to the front and of course these need kind of fastening in place as well because otherwise the cabochon can easily slip in and out of that. So for that I'm going to cut another length of the 0.3 mil, just about the same length as before. And again, I'm going to start from the midpoint and we want to attach this also to the bottom, roughly middle loop. So just put the end through and attach it by wrapping it around that loop a couple of times. So again, I've attached it across the top of the loop there and we're going to do the same principle of moving from loop to loop and wrapping around and that way connect them. But as you can see on the front here, there's a bit more space in between the loops than there was on the back. And that is because the back is completely flat, obviously the cabochon, you can see they fit nicely, but on the front here, it domes upwards. So, to account for that, this is where the beads come in. So we're just gonna have a few beads handy. And they're gonna kinda fill in the gaps between the loops more than just having the plain wire, and obviously that adds a bit extra decoration as well. So, to get to the next loop, I'm gonna add a bead before I start wrapping that. Just let it drop all the way down. And that is going to just fill in that little gap perfectly. And then otherwise, it's the same principle. Go through the next loop, continue in the same direction. And then just make sure the bead is going to sit nicely in between those two. And bridge that gap. And then just wrap around the top of this loop. Until we get to the other side of that. And of course need to then fill in the gap between this and the next loop after that. With another bead. And same principle, I like to work my way from side to side. So I work my way upwards on both sides at the same time. Until the wires meet up at the top, just like on the back. Now don't forget at some point we do need to add in the cabochon before we get too far. If you haven't done so already. So just make sure to pop it in. So we can continue capturing it in place all the way up to the top. Then once we reach the top here, you just want to get rid of the excess wires in the same way that I showed you on the back. So then we just need to make the bail here. So what I like to do is just push the twist that we made forward a little bit. And then I take my crochet hook or whatever mandrel you're using, put it right where the bend is behind the twist there, and then start to bring the twisted wire 
all the way around and then I just want to twist the length of wire here to match the length we need for the bale now of course you can twist a bit extra if you need to or undo a bit because then I'm going to separate the two lengths out and as I'm bringing the wire around the crochet hook I'm going to bring them to the front on either side of it so just like that and we then have a full circle which is going to be the bale itself. Now of course we just need to fasten this in place so I'm just going to bring the wire from one side over the front of the bale towards the other side and then the other one comes over the front and in the other direction there and then bring them out towards the back. So it ends up looking a little something like that and then what we just need to do here on the back is fasten these in place and tuck them out of the way. So I'm just going to get my flush cutters and we want to cut down the length but make sure to leave a short length of a few millimeters here after we cut it off. So you can see just there we have a short little length and for that I then grab my tweezers and pliers and just grab onto the very end and tuck it inwards and you just want to find a little space underneath the bale there where we can tuck the end of the wire away and just push it in place and then of course just cut down the other end as well and do the same thing just grab onto the end, tuck it back inwards into a little gap and then just squeeze it into place. And then we have the bale fastened and your pendant is now complete. Obviously just attach a chain or whatever you want to hang it on and then it's ready to wear. And then we have both a beautiful front and back of the cabochon in case it twists around while you're wearing it. And of course the loops around the edge are a really nice decorative feature of the design. Now I have loads of other tutorials on my channel for different ways of capturing a cabochon. In fact I have a whole specific playlist for it so I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below. And of course feel free to like, share and subscribe and if you want to support me in a different way there's also a super thanks button below. Otherwise I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.